Hello friends. This is part two video of um, page navigation based on the slicer selection. Uh, do check out part one video and link of part one video is in the description of this video and do take a look at that. Uh, let's directly jump into uh, part two video and I'm assuming that you have already watched part one video so it's easy to follow. Um, so let's get to part B. And yeah, one more thing, uh, subscribe the channel. Thanks. To expand the solution, here in Power BI, what I did is I just made small changes into my manufacturer table, right? And uh, to make it more dynamic. Um, so if we go to our manufacturing table here, what I have here is I created a manufacturer. I added a few more manufacturer like Nissan, BMW, Honda, and Mazda in part one. Those were not there. So and also I added a column called page. So basically what I want to say is, okay, if my manufacturer already selected which page you go, go to. So here now I can control like multiple manufacturer can go to a one single page. Like for example, for BMW, I want it to be also go to Audi page. And for Honda and Nissan, I want to go to a general page. And I left the blank for Mazda. So when the page is not available, we want to go to the default page. So now what we have is the navigation is not based on what the manufacturer name you have selected, but based on the manufacturer name you selected, whatever the page you give where it should go, uh, it, it will use that to navigate based on the selection. So it allows us to have a lot more control and uh, we can have this data coming from some external uh, uh, store wherever the data is coming from and we can feed it from there so we don't have to come into Power BI. Only time we need to come to Power BI if we are adding a specialized page for a manufacturer. Let's say we add another uh, a, a manufacturer here, we want a dedicated page for that manufacturer. We can of course give that manufacturer in add in the table and also give the page value but if the page does not exist in Power BI it will give the error, right? So the button will give the error when we click it. Um, so only in that case, we have to come into, into Power BI to add the page. Otherwise, it will be driven based on uh, the page value in the page column, assuming those um, pages already exist in your Power BI report. Okay, so how, how this changes? So let's say if I click on Nissan right now, and uh, it's going to say click to view Nissan page and if I click right now there is no Nissan page probably I will get an error. So this is what we will get an error because it's supposed to go to destination which is generic. But let's say if I go to BMW right now what happens with the existing solution we haven't changed anything yet. What it is doing it is still saying the BMW the page does not exist. But in our table now we told it the BMW should go to the page which is on Audi. So what I'm going to do here is so we have a text for button which is fine. The navigation measure we're going to change. So instead of selected value, we're going to say selected value manufacturer page. And also we're going to set it to default page. So when the manufacturer value does not exist and then we will go to um, a um, a default page but actually I'm not going to do it here I want to first make sure that I have a single value selected so let's do a couple of changes here so store this selected value either I can make my slicer single selection but if I'm not making it a single selection then I need to check it in here if has one value manufacturer manufacturer okay yeah then if my navigation page is uh, the selected value is blank means I did not find any value for this then I can set it to default actually what I'm going to do is uh, if my selected value is equal to blank because sometimes null it's blank is null and there can be empty string so I'm going to check both of those uh, if this is blank then go to default or whatever the default page we create and then otherwise go to the selected value let me actually walk through what we're doing here 
So what I'm saying is, okay, whatever, which manufacturing page has been selected, right? So to give the name page of the you know, manufacturer page. Um, and if, what we want to check is if there's multiple values selected and then the selected value will return blank in that case, right? Because we want to make sure it's a single select. And then first we're checking if has one value manufactured. So if there is one manufacturer has been selected and then we're checking if that selected page page value or i can call it uh, select not selected value page value if page value is blank right or page blank um, so calls uh, escape ese function will give you the um, if it's blank it will give you the empty string so i'm checking if the value is empty string then go to the default page otherwise go to the page value right so that's what and if this if it's more than one value selected of course then we don't want to do anything so let's see how uh, this changes everything uh, let's first create a default page here quickly so i'm going to copy um, this page gmc your page and make it def also default let's uh, duplicate it and these pages are hidden because we don't want to use it to see this i mean let's call it a default and maybe i'll change the look of this so that we know we are going to this page make it a adjust a day table okay so let's uh, go back here and if you remember let's look at the data here if you remember the mazda does not have any values it's a blank we expect it to go to the default page so what we can do here is so if we select mazda here we expect it to go to uh sorry click maza click perfect it's going to default page we haven't given the value in the page navigation uh, page column but still we're defaulting it to if that value does not exist we're defaulting it to a default page so that the one one part of this is working but let's see if i select more than one what would happen um uh, of course it's going to select a manufacturer and if i click on this nothing is going to happen because it doesn't allow us to select more than uh, one page now one other thing is for the bmw if i go to bmw now and i click on this one and it will go to rd page as you can see it goes to rd page but there is one another challenge here uh, let me explain what that is Okay, so one challenge we have here is if you look at the sales of Audi and BMW, so Audi has uh, 11,422 and BMW is 11,555. I just added a table uh, with the sales. Now, if I click on a BMW here, uh, let's uh, collapse these uh, unnecessary things. Uh, okay, so if I click on this, uh, uh, click to view BMW page here, it's going to RD page. Of course, we want it to go to RD, but it is showing us RD sales, not BMW. And uh, the reason for that is again, uh, because we have pre-filtered these pages, right? Because we said these are dedicated pages. Previous in part one, we have a dedicated page, but here now it's more dynamic. Same page can be shared by multiple manufacturers, right? So that's a challenge here. And uh, even if I put a, um, let's put the, uh, from our table uh, let's put the sales here as well just to show what the numbers is and it shows 11,000 right I'm gonna make it I don't want it to 11k but exact number so if you see this will be 11422 which is if we go back to our uh, start page that is a Audi number not BMW number right so that's one challenge with this particular solution so how we make this page that we don't want it to be pre-filtered for a specific manufacturer but allow it to still work if if we come to this page like kind of drill through thing right but we're not uh, doing the drill through here in this case and uh, uh, what I'm going to do is we can remove this filter on this page of course then it will show everything all the manufacturers and then we can take help of sync slicers. This is this is really good use case of the use case of that. So I'm going to click on this slicer here. Go to my view. I think I have to look into sync slicer. Oh, it's already there. 
I click on my sync slicer and I want this slicer to be on every page. For now, I'm going to add into Ordi and then I'm going to say it's not visible there because I don't want to see it there. There's no need. I want it to filter, sync the slicer, pass the value, but do not um, show it to the user because we don't want the user to select it. So let's see how does that changes everything. So now I have a BMW selected here. And if I click on this one, I just fixed the Audi page for now. So as you can see, now it shows me manufacturers BMW and sum of sale is 11,555, which is good. And if I go to start page again here, and uh, now I click on Audi here, and uh, I select Audi and click the um, page. Uh, it should show us Audi, not BMW. So why that is happening? I think I know the reason. Let's look at the sync slicer again to make sure it's correctly set up. Maybe I did something wrong here. So go to manufacturer, click, uh, oh, sorry, uh, slicer, go to click. So I said sync, oh. So I have to make sure I click on which page it's supposed to sync with. So start page supposed to sync with uh, other pages as well. I, I have this unchecked. I think that's the problem. So let's see if this fixed it. So if now we go to Audi page, it should show us Audi. Ah, oh, here you go. So it shows Audi number 11,422. If I go back to my start page, click BMW. And then, sorry, click BMW and click on this page and we should get the bmw perfect so i can rename this now this naming of the pages does not matter whatever the name we give here um whatever the use case is make sure we have to have this name of the page the same name in our manufacturer uh, table in the column page column uh, that's rest it's going to be already behind it now it can be anything so those two should be matching and then it should work um let me know what you guys think about this video i know it's just a little bit uh, um, different use cases but i've seen many times people ask like based on the slicer they want to navigate to the different pages and whatnot and uh, uh, previously the solution was you create the buttons and then you have a bookmarks or page navigation associated with those um buttons but the challenge as i mentioned uh, in my part one video like uh, if the values keep on changing you have to come and add the buttons and all the stuff now if with this part two now we have a, a if no page available uh, for let's say the page is not ready for that manufacturer we can point it to the default page automatically once we have whatever default page we want to call it we can have one page which can be used by multiple manufacturers and all that can be controlled from the uh, data table instead of uh, through the measures and all the stuff the, uh, rather than having a based on the name of the manufacturer we can now create use it from the other column in the manufacturing table i love this video and it was a little fun and it, it was not complex but something i think uh, uh, can be very very useful uh, let me know what you guys think about this video again uh, make sure to subscribe my channel leave your comments and hit the bell icon and do share with your network and so that others can learn from here as well. Uh, always your feedback is, is, is always welcome. Doesn't matter what it is, good, bad, but just share your thoughts, what you think about it. Uh, until next video, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.